Hello and welcome back to the program. It's starting to get loud in here. That's a little better. As always, I'm your beautiful and gracious host, Steven, and we're keeping on uh, working on this uh, rear end today. So far today, I have put those two tubes in. See the line up there, nice and flush. And strengthen this thing. Right now, I'm starting to cut these little guys that go here at an angle. They go right here. They raise up this back piece here. And then once I have that established, then I could measure this one that goes here, down. And I have to measure because on my frame, the book frame, this top tube is a couple inches shorter than the Haynes Roadster. So the dimension that they gave me for these, for the, the top tube, actually it goes here, for this top tube, is not gonna work in my application. So I have to find a fixed point and measure from that. So that's what I'm doing now. I got my length here, 106 millimeters. Ow. That hook. Ow, my finger. And then I gotta cut two crazy angles and do it. These crazy angles are 36.5 and 57.5 degrees. That's interesting. So I've been wanting to do something fun. I have uh, some t-shirts that I have and I haven't really done much with. They're actually for sale on my big cartel. And what I would like to do is uh, give one away. I have a bunch here. I have large, medium, and small. Small, medium, and large. To one of you lucky, lucky viewers. And to get one of these awesome t-shirts, all I need you to do is go down into the comments and I want you to type in what is your dream car that you'd like to build not your dream car that you want to buy so like no Lamborghinis or anything like that your dream car that you want to build I have lots and lots of cars that I'd like to build crazy swaps rural drive civics you know lifted whatever I mean all kinds of crazy cars so I'll pick at random from all the all the comments in there and I will get your information and send you a shirt Good luck, and may the luck always be on your side. And may the luck be with you for always. Let the luck be with you. The luck is strong with this one. This is what I had to do to get this tiny little piece cut at such an extreme angle. And clear, to clear everything for it to cut all the way through. It's actually working pretty good. Whatever it takes. I thought I might have to grab the hacksaw to finish that off, but I think I got it. Oh no! Oh, I almost had it. I could have messed my blade up. Crap! Crap! I could probably bend that off of there now, though. Just use my fingers. That could have been dangerous. All right, let's do this other one first before I change. Before I change the angle. Don't pop out. It is still good. Hopefully it didn't twist my freaking thing. And it's still straight up and down. Looks like it is. That could have been bad.
hope you can't see those, but I got some weld splatter on my lens. That sucks. This is extremely difficult. I almost kind of wish I would have went with a Haynes Roadster plans to begin with. I don't know. It's not impossible. It's just I got I would get it close and then it wasn't it didn't work. I'd measure again and cut another one. I changed the angles of this and this and the length of this one from the um, the plans. Uh, this one actually fits that side perfectly. But I'm getting a gap on this side, so something's off. My measurements from here to here on both sides are okay. My measurements from here to here are okay. I don't really know. The length of this guy is maybe a millimeter off either side. I, I don't know, but it, it looks like I'm about, about three millimeters short over here. So I got to make that one just a little bit longer. I don't know why. All my other measurements seem to be lining up just right or real close. So... As much as you measure and as careful as you are to get these things, like the angles just right and the and the and the in the and leveling it and squaring it just as, as close as you can, there's always something that's going to be a little bit off. So, you know, unless you're on an actual chassis table with, you know, very known fixed points, then uh, I guess what's going to happen is it's just going to be off a little bit. Hopefully, it doesn't ruin the. Uh, the way it drives I don't think it will I mean I'll have everything should be adjustable so I don't think it should be that big of a deal here's hoping Coming along. Honestly, I thought I'd have more done than this, though, by now. But it's coming along. These from here to here, and from here to here, and then the guy that goes across here that you hang the diff from. That's pretty much it. And then tunnel, trans tunnel. I need an engine though. You got these things grinded down because it stuck up a little too high. It's a really steep angle, and this is only one inch, so you're gonna have some overhang, top and bottom. I'll have to fill that with weld or plate or something, possibly. Um, right now, I'm figuring out how I want to mount the diff. Um, what they got going on here is this beam that goes across the middle and he's got these two round buckets that a 12 millimeter bolt goes up through and then the nut goes on the top and that way your your bolts out of the way it's not sticking up it's down it's recessed down inside that bucket um, here they are and they're 600 millimeters apart exactly the same length I mean it's with the sub that's what the the diff ears are um, and this gives me a radius for the tube, the base plate, and the inner the inner hole, which you know these radius that's about half an inch for this hole for the the bolt to go through, and the outside's about the tube is uh, sixteen five times two thirty three point seven millimeters is uh, one point three two six inches. And I don't have any two 1.326 inches. I was looking around the shop looking for anything that I could find that's about that size. And luckily, my old 240 pulls through. It's a, uh, I don't know, some, one of the control arms to 240. I think it's the uh, traction rod, maybe. Oh, I don't know. But 
it's got this bushing on the end. And this thing is very close. 1.39 instead of 1.32. 70 thousandths of an inch. So I think I can make this work. I just gotta cut this off of the arm and burn out the bushing, which I've done a lot and I don't like doing it. I don't have a press here, so I can't press it out. This out, rubber out, and that inside sleeve, I might leave in actually. I don't really need to cut that out. And then I'll make a, uh, a round plug out of some um, plate, some eighth inch plate with a half inch hole in it. And that should be where my diff mounts. I think that'll work. It's a very low cost way of doing it, which I mean is the whole point, isn't it? Half the point. One of the points is to go fast and have fun. The other, the other point is to do it really cheap. That's the low cost way. Thank you, stock Nissan parts. It's actually a little chilly out here. It's like a little, uh, little automotive campfire. I've done this a lot, and I don't really like doing it. But it works. People are starting to leave work in the other shops. They're probably going to be like, what is this guy doing? Tube. A diff hanger tube? I don't know what to call it. I only got one done. I gotta go. JT's car here. All right, shop's all clean. Everything's put away. That was fun. One step closer. I'm so excited. Um, don't remember to forget. Don't forget to remember. <laughs> Drop a comment in there. Tell me what is your dream build. And you might get a shirt. Your chances are pretty high because I don't have a whole lot of comments usually. So the less people that comment, the uh, higher your chances of getting a shirt. Mm. Mm. Anyway, that's it. I'm going to go eat my brownie. And I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye. Here. An SR. Do some street tuning tonight. That is a four inch straight pipe aluminum exhaust. Aluminum. It's pretty dark out here. The uh, downpipe is stainless, obviously, but downpipe back, it's all aluminum. Crazy. Crazy mofo.